Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tiny Blue Games. My name, of course, is Sisa or Chris, and today we're playing Final Fantasy XIV in 2019. And specifically, we'll be looking at Cutter's Cry. This is a, another dungeon duty, whatever you want to call it. It is a dungeon that is optional to the main scenario quest. And something I was fully going to miss, except for the fact that a viewer such as yourself found me in game and said, hey, you should check this dungeon out since you are the proper level for it. So thank you so much to that person. You know who you are. And here we are. So it's a pretty cool dungeon. It's once again a very different atmosphere than any other dungeon I'd done. I do like the desert. I do feel like I was doing a lot of exploring and a lot of main scenario quests in the desert. Um, and it was really kind of fun to dive down and really get to know some of the creatures that you do get to play with and alongside and against in the desert. Um, and I forget the actual, they're called sand bats, I guess, these things right now that I'm fighting, um, but the, the ant creatures, and we'll get to them just in a second, um, they're, they're very particular. They, they have a certain set of skills that they do, they have a lot of ground targeted um, damage that they'll do that's not necessarily marked with orange, it's got different animations that you have to watch out for, um, and they do a lot of damage if you do end up standing in them because the telegraphs that are there tend to be very long and you know there's a fair bit of time to move out of them so if you don't it's it's really your own fault that you're in this damage and getting hit the way you are. Um, so it was it was a very interesting situation. The other thing that was really introduced in this dungeon was the ability to kind of quick travel um, between different rooms. And we, we've noticed certain dungeons that have had, you know, one teleport or something like that. Um, but there was quite a few teleports in this dungeon that allowed you to see sort of deeper into the, the sand burrow, as it were. Um, it was also kind of weird to think of you like going through this weird sand hole um I, I feel like i would be terrified doing that in real life like going into this weird sand pit thing that would suck me in and bring me to the other side i, I, I don't know if i would trust that um but there, there's a lot of things i wouldn't do that i do in mmorpgs so i, I can't really say it's that out of line um, I guess another big thing here is that I'm not healing, which is something that I kind of wanted to just take a break and do some DPS. Um, and I, I was all geared up for it to be this really long queue, uh, but I ended up getting in in like three minutes anyways. Um, and the average wait time was 18, so this this was a, a blessed run from the very start. Um, despite the fact that it's the first time I have a full-on party wipe, so spoilers. There is a full-on death scene coming up soon to a YouTube channel near you. Um, but I, I was giving the, the summoner a go again, and I really do enjoy the summoner. Um, I've been trying to play more on the bard just because it's now the job that is a bit lower than the uh, summoner-scholar combo. Um, it's really easy to level that being that they are attached together. It's um, definitely a benefit and I, I think I would recommend if you were only to be trying to level one job, it's definitely um, a very worthwhile combination to consider. Um, but the, the gameplay of the actual summoner I think is a much more enjoyable gameplay for DPS right now just because I, I, I think it's got like a skill system that I really understand whereas the bard Although I understand parts of it, I think I need to unlock more of the actual bard portions to really enjoy it. Um, whereas with the summoner, there's a few aspects that I, like there's, it's actually got like kind of like a bunch of classes in one. It's got the, the pet obviously, that you can command with different attacks um, that have kind of a larger focus on AOE sometimes or a larger focus on single target sometimes. Um, it's got the, um, dot so you can you can put two dots on one enemy and then you have the one skill that'll spread it um, so definitely a situation where you you choose an enemy and then you s wait for all the other enemies to group up and then you'll you'll get them all with the dot damage which is really nice 
Um, and then it has a kind of a build and spend situation. Um, so it's got quite a few different skills in one, and then it also has a lot of really nice animations that I enjoy. So I, I'm definitely a fan of the summoner at the moment, but I think obviously that's going to change when we unlock more skills um, that some of the other classes or jobs get later on. Um, I, I think particularly, like I say, the bard, when I have more bard specific abilities, uh, will be very interesting. And the bard hasn't hit 40 yet, which is when I did get a lot more interesting stuff on the summoner and scholar. So I'm excited to see what comes from that. Um, in terms of the actual dungeon, it's kind of nice to set my focus on a dungeon again. Um, I've been very focused on the main scenario quest and getting through that. And it's it's really nice when you do um, end up doing something that isn't a part of the main scenario quest, when it's something that's truly optional and you're like, I've gone out of my way to unlock this. Um, and it's, it's really nice, I think, for the game as well, because it does feel like there's a tremendous amount of content that you do need to do in this game. So having a few things that are optional and feel like, you know, you're taking the time to go and do that and it's your own choice to do it, uh, does make the, the content feel a little bit more interesting. And especially when it's such a unique kind of side story and um, environment that you get to see that you might have otherwise missed. Uh, so I definitely, I definitely do enjoy that as well. It's, you know, it's it's fun. I like I like dungeons. I think everyone does. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to continue through the dungeon. These videos always get me, like, just off topic because they are the longer videos, and I'm very aware going into it. I see the timestamp of 20 minutes. I'm like, wow, you got 20 minutes of talking to get through, so you got this, um, which is fine. I love talking to each and every one of you. Um, and it's, it's very interesting because from my perspective, I feel like I'm talking to a big crowd. Um, but when I think about the actual conversation, you're going to be listening it, to it at your own time, right? Like, it's just going to be you hearing my voice. So it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one conversation when you receive it as well. Um, but, but there's also that crowd aspect of the actual comments and stuff like that. So y YouTube's just a wonderful place is what I'm trying to get to. Um, I think this is coming up to my death, uh, so get ready for that. And I, I, I must note that I wasn't the healer that ended up in my first complete wipe. Um, not that I'm blaming any healer or saying that any healer is worse than me because it's not true. Um, I, I think what happened is a, a combination of the tank pulling a little bit too much and the healer not quite being ready for it, um, which, I mean, that, that sums up most wipes when you, you look at it um maybe it's not yet we'll, we'll see we'll get there um, but yeah so hopefully you guys are enjoying your december i guess it's getting kind of closer to the holidays and i am away for the the last two weeks of december i'm hoping to have enough video content that once again it doesn't seem like i'm away um but we'll see how prepared i am because i've got a fair bit of stuff to do to prepare for my travels as well so there might end up being a saturday without a video we'll see how it goes um, but i've been very proud of how many videos and how consecutive and consistent i've been so i, I kind of want to keep that going uh, but we'll see oh here this is this is yeah there you go tank goes down and look at this look how quickly i get shredded here it's gonna happen in a few seconds boom look at that look at that and I was, I was so shocked when I, I went down here because I was like, wait, what now? What happens? Um, and it's, it's pretty quick. You just actually end up going back to the start. I mean, I'm telling you guys like you don't know, but uh, for new players, you do end up just going back to the start of the dungeon. Um, in this situation, there are fast travel points that take you back pretty quickly to where you need to go. I would think it could be kind of irritating in some dungeons, but there does seem to be a shortcut button as well. So maybe it takes you kind of to like a checkpoint scenario. I haven't wiped enough to really know exactly what the situation is, um, but I did take the shortcut and I ended up having to go through quite a few of the actual um, sand teleport things as well. So I feel like that the checkpoint can still be pretty far if you know you get unlucky with where you die. Which, which could be unfortunate. Uh, 
Uh, but really it wasn't that big of a setback and it was kind of fun to actually see what happens when a party dies. So there you go. First wipe. Maybe that should be my title. Um, I should, <laughs> I'll put first wipe in it and people will think that it's me healing, but it's not. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm way too proud of that fact. Um, it's my DPS. I should have been DPSing harder is obviously what caused us to wipe. I needed to go in there and blow up those mobs quicker, um, which I think I do a fair bit of damage on the summoner, but it's it's so hard to really gauge without any kind of DPS meter or anything like that. So it's, it's kind of like a fun bliss of ignorance where you're like just really focused on how the class or the job feels, whereas so many MMOs, it is just about seeing that number, that DPS number, and seeing how, like, I'm, I'm obviously talking about World of Warcraft a lot here, um, where you are, like, even at low levels where it doesn't really matter, sometimes just focused on doing DPS in low-level dungeons. It's, it's such a weird situation, whereas I think it adds a lot more fun to the game when you're just going around, doing your skills, like, obviously playing in a you know, a helpful manner, but it's it's not just about minimi or optimizing your, your gameplay, which is kind of fun. I really enjoy the summoner, like the, the book and the casting. I've got this, this thing for books and like flipping through it when you're casting spells. The newest, um, some of the animations in WoW added kind of a book that you flip through um, for the, the holy, um, the holy, ch -ch -ch -ch. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. <laughs> um, they've got the book, the wings, you, you get the drift, and they, they flip through the book while they're casting. It's not going to come to me in this video, apparently, what the name is, so we'll just leave it at that um, and attack this big scorpulug thing. It's like a weird spiky... like a slug. I'm going to say like a spiky slug. Um, this was actually a really fun fight because it did have some different mechanics um, where he went underground and you had to be very cautious about where he was going um, so that there was definitely a bit more that you had to pay attention to and specifically in the end fight the end boss that we'll get to eventually um, there was some more like I guess surroundings that you had to be aware of um, this one was definitely like you had to position yourself you had to stand away you had to go up close I think it would be one of those bosses that would be less enjoyable for a close range class um, because there's more chance of you getting clipped by a certain skill if you are standing close to the boss anyways um, so as a ranged class I feel like I can kind of really stand far away and avoid as much damage as possible which is nice um, I really enjoy the the bossing on this this class as well on the uh, the summoner because you have kind of your rotation and then you have to try and keep your your dots up as well so there's it really does feel like quite a few different classes that you would see in other MMOs all mixed into this one job that kind of gives you a little bit of everything I feel like it, it at endgame might suffer from that issue where it feels like it's pretty good at a few different things but might not be great at certain things uh, but we'll have to see how i feel about it when i get there i'm really just excited to get to end game in this mmo because you know it hasn't felt the way i feel about most mmos yet like i i very often think of mmos i think of being max level and just working on gearing and that next piece of gear um, waiting for new content to release like that, that's how I feel in WoW, that's how I feel in Guild Wars 2, that's how I felt in Wildstar at the end. Because um, once you've, you've done the leveling, once you've done the learning process of the game, that's mostly what you're focused on. So I'm very interesting to, interested to have that feeling with this game as well. I've just, you know, I'm still so rooted in the learning phase. Like there, I think there's just so many systems and so many different jobs that you have access to so quickly in this game. Um, and that it's not, you know, you starting a new character, it's you progressing the same character, but with a different job. So it definitely feels very different. Um, and it's, it's almost hard to imagine it feeling like, you know, a regular MMO when I log in, just because it's, 
it's not something I've experienced yet. The only times it has felt like that is when I was very specifically trying to level up my um, my summoner to uh, catch up with my bard because I would log in and I would specifically do the um, the daily roulette, which felt very much like a random dungeon, like a random daily dungeon. Um, so that feeling for the few days that I was doing that, and I, I definitely mentioned that I think in the videos as well um, at that time, was that that felt very much like a traditional MMO. I was just going in, I was trying to get as much XP as I could, and then I was logging off for a bit, which is good, but it also is kind of one of the, you know, it feels a bit more damaging then. I, my fridge is like freaking out if you're wondering what that noise is. I t honestly don't know what to tell you about it, but we're like 15 minutes into this 20 minute recording and my fridge is going to either blow itself up or it's going to die trying and we're just going to try and power through it. Um, try and focus on the calming background noises and my voice. If you were listening to this while trying to fall asleep, which I sometimes do with my YouTube videos, I, I apologize that things got a little bit heated between me and the fridge, um, but I'd like to let you know that we're probably both going to survive this encounter. I'm <laughs> just waiting for it to make its next move, but I think it's, I think it's chill. I hope it's not dying. I would hate to have to eat all of my ice cream or whatever. I don't know. I don't have much ice cream. This, this is getting way, way further off topic than normal. At least usually we spend ourselves, you know, we spend time talking about other MMOs and stuff, but here we're talking about me in a fridge, so things are getting real weird. I'm really excited to make a bunch of videos um, sort of surrounding the new year. I can't believe that we're almost at the end of 2019. I can't believe that I'm going to have to start saying something at the start of my videos that doesn't rhyme with 2019. Um, we'll see if I just power through it and do something that doesn't rhyme anyways and you guys suffer <laughs> suffer with me through it. Um, I think we'll just find something that naturally happens. I think the main reason I, I did it too was you know, I, I was originally just planning on making one Final Fantasy XIV video, testing out the game, seeing what it was like, because I'd never played it before. Um, and I was going to say, like, you know, what's Final Fantasy XIV like in 2019? Um, and then I did it, and I really, really enjoyed the game. And you guys really, you know, I, I got a fair bit of attention with that video. And as any good content creator, I, I noticed, and I was like, hey, people people are interested in some more Final Fantasy XIV content and that's where I dived in. So that that sentence that I say at the start of each of these videos um, kind of holds a very special place in my mind because it really it's really what started this this journey that's been quite a few videos. Like I, I don't know this might be the most amount of videos I've done for a specific game ever now. Um, I'd have to see how many Wildstar videos I made in total, but it definitely feels like it, definitely with the amount and the quantity of videos that I, I do per per week, um, it, it could easily have caught up by now. So I, I'm very interested to see, I should, I should do a recap of what games I've covered the most, um, but yeah. So this is the final boss, um, he is a pretty cool monster, um, I think you would pronounce it like Chimera or Chimera, something like that. Um, and this is the type of monster that I believe the person who introduced me to the idea of unlocking this dungeon, I'm sorry about how confusing that sentence was, um, they said that the watch out for this guy because there's some very specific attacks where you need to stand far away and where you need to stand really close. Um, and what's very interesting about it is that you're supposed to stand far away when the eyes are uh, when the eyes are, oh god, I should remember it now. It's either purple or blue, and one of them you move away, and one of them you, you go in close. Uh, but what's, what's particularly interesting about it is that you kind of just read on the screen that his eyes have turned purple or blue. You're not actually, like, you don't need to watch the eyes, which I think is very weird. So yeah, burn blue, you run away, and then you run back in. Um, and then if it's burn purple, you need to get in because there'll be sort of a cone on the outside that'll damage you. So a very cool skill, um, something I've seen in other MMOs, and I, I definitely really 
appreciate that because it, it definitely felt like I was doing a traditional boss with a lot of different mechanics that I had to be aware of. Um, and it it's something that gets in the way of your rotation, which I, I really like. And then I got targeted and I really started freaking out because I was like, I didn't learn anything about being targeted. Um, and then I kind of saw it that I had to get in, but I think I got targeted by this blue ball. Um, which I let just sort of sit there and explode into myself and the rest of the party, which was a pretty major party foul. So I acknowledge the mistake I made there, and you'll see even in this fight that I do better. I'll get targeted again because the monster's probably like, hey, the seesaw doesn't know what he's doing, let's target him. Um, so you'll see I went in and I saw the target, so I ran away. And here comes the ball, and I confirm my suspicions that it does chase me around, and I lead it sort of out away from everyone to blow up by itself, like a good summoner that I am. So it's really a happy story in the end, um, because, hey, I didn't kill everyone, and that's that's always a good day on Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I've noticed also... I should mention that this, this recording is with the new microphone. Um, I'm also doing it before getting feedback from the video I did on the HUD layout. So if you guys have gone in there and sort of given me a bunch of setting changes I should do, I haven't quite applied them yet in this video. Um, that being said, if there's more settings that you think I should change or you just want to repeat the feedback, feel free to give it to me. Um, I should have mentioned this right at the start of the 20 minute video instead of at the very end for the few people who are still watching. Um, but you know, you guys probably have the most experience with the sound anyway, so there you go. But yeah guys, that's the dungeon. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I really enjoyed the last boss. Um, and I thank you very much for the person who introduced it to me because it was a ton of fun. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video and have a great rest of your day.